To all the people saying Tesla is a has-been, a never-was, a one-trick pony, a no-trick pony, well, uh, I disagree, and not just because I've had a chance to meet and interview a number of the engineers, even at the highest levels, but because I have seen the products, I have experienced the products, and the experts who have seen, touched, used, and torn down the product well, they share the same opinion. That's why we're going to look at today the best tech of 2025. The Motor Trend Award goes to Tesla Cybertruck Steer by Wire, which reinvented steering. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Oh, 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 oh. So what we've got here is this from Motor Trend themselves, the best tech of 2025. Doing what it does best, Tesla once again ignored industry norms and turned concept car technology into a reality. And there's a bunch of pictures here. We'll get to those in a moment or show them as B-roll. If anyone could make a hexagon roll smoothly, the Cybertruck probably would have seven sided tires to match its wheel covers. But unlike other automakers, it's quick to question the status quo. In a way, Cybertruck engineers did exactly that with their steer by wire system. Our 2025 winner for best chassis by completely removing the mechanical connection between your hands and your wheels. Now that's dangerous, right? That's scary. What if, what if it malfunctions? Well, you'd be delighted to know it is triple redundant. It's got three ways of determining what it's doing and keeping it in motion. But the biggest one, the easiest one, the plainest one to understand is that it's always in push pull mode. So you've got the two motors, both of them capable of fully steering in either direction. That's great, right? But they, so they can push and pull, but they both can. And what they will do all the time is test each other. Give a little bit too much, a little bit too little, make sure that the other motor is pushing the correct amount. And if it determines that one of those two motors is not pushing or pulling the correct amount, it sends a warning. You need to get service. You need to get this fixed. ASAP, it may even tell you to pull over if the fault is great enough. Well, that just means more room for failure, right? I mean, potentially, but electric motors are very reliable. This is not new technology. Electric motors have been around for a while, and they have precisely one moving part. That makes it easy for them to do their job. So the, the redundancy makes them work. What also makes them work is that they are variable steering. So no matter how fast you're going, your maximum turn is from here to here. That's it. That's all you got. A little bit more than that, but I don't feel like punching myself in the face. That's your job. Please don't do that. It is not your job. It was a joke. Okay. So that means in a parking lot, instead of going hand over hand, like you're turning a big old pirate ship, you just go like this and you're at full lock. You just go actually about here. You're at full lock. You could drive with one hand for persons with, a uh, in, uh, with an inability to use both arms fully. This can be a game changer. This can restore their ability to drive without having to put a suicide knob on the wheel. Isn't that what they're called? I think that's what they're called. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments or correct me because I'm right. It doesn't matter. Just leave a comment. So what happens is in a parking lot, you can. You can actually maneuver and on the highway, if you freak out and crank it, you don't go flying off the road. You don't uh, lose control. Now you're not going to lose control anyway because of torque vectoring and uh, emergency braking that should prevent this in the front. But oh, there's a lot of things going on. Electric cars have fantastic traction control. The best I've driven Subarus that had amazing traction control, but they struggle to compete with what even some of the cheaper electric cars can do because electric motors are very, very easy to control. You're not trying to hold back horses under the hood that are being powered by splody juice going all crazy in the dyno burner. No, you've got something different. You've got just watts and volts and amps. So I don't know how you feel about that, but it doesn't matter because it works. Let's jump back over to this. We've got uh, Tesla fundamentally reimagined rack and pinion steering. The auto industry has spent a hundred years refining. That change unlocks real tangible benefits. Thanks to steer by wire, the 6,900 pound stainless steel megalith moves with uncommon agility. I recently had an opportunity to take an overnight test drive in a Cybertruck. I'd driven a Cybertruck before, probably 50 miles, a hundred miles, certainly not over a hundred miles. So I already knew what to expect, but in the overnight, I got to drive a little bit longer. 
And it was, I got to take it through my routes, through my drive throughs through my difficult scenarios. And it was fantastic. It feels like you're driving a car. It doesn't feel as big as it is. It certainly doesn't turn like a boat and you've got the rear steering, which makes it that much better. Um, yes. Pilot the Cybertruck with a yoke that sweeps through its full range of motion in just 340 degrees. So it doesn't even go all the way around less than one complete turn. That's possible because the relationship between the input and the resulting angle of the front wheels is written in code with all the infinite possibilities that implies. It uses the flexibility to give Cybertruck the quickest steering of any production vehicle at parking lot speeds and more relaxed response at highway speeds. Well, how long is it going to take me to get used to this? almost no time at all. I am not a young man. I mean, I'm younger than some, but older than most living humans. And I had no problem at all getting used to the steering in about, I don't know, five minutes, 10 minutes. And then I never had to think about it again. I also found that just having the blinker on my thumb, not a problem. And I've had problems with it on cars, on Model S and X, and the new threes, because if you're steering hand over hand, you don't remember where it is. But if your hands never need to leave the wheel, it's there. It's at your thumb all the time. In whichever direction you're going to turn the wheel is which one it is. If you're turning this way, it's the top button. If you're turning this way, it's the bottom button. Whichever hand way, direction this hand travels is where the button is. And you can put a little tactile little sticker on it, a little, little bit of braille for you there if you need to. But I don't think you need to. Tesla was not the first to put steer by wire in a car, uh, but it was the first to realize the technology's full potential and bring it to U.S. roads. The steering ratio adjusts over a huge spread from an unheard of five to one at a crawl to 12 to one at the top end. There are others who have done steer by wire and there are others, there are others who have done rear steer. I, my neighbors had a Subaru. I want to think it was a Subaru, maybe a WRX or something in the nineties that had rear steering. I don't remember which car it was but it had rear steering. So yeah, the Silverado, which has rear wheel steering and a conventional rack and pinion system up front serves as a perfect foil. Despite riding on a longer wheelbase than the Tesla, the Chevy traces a smaller turning diameter by a foot. Yet it still drives, drives like a bulkier, more cumbersome truck because the steering covers an old school 3.2 turns lock to lock. To parallel park the Tesla, you roll your wrists right, then flick them to the left, never removing your hands from the wheel. You don't go hand over hand to parallel park. And why are you parallel parking? Just use auto park. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't recall if auto park is available on Cybertruck yet. I don't, I didn't have an opportunity to use it. Um, but no, it does have auto park because I used it to back into the charging spot. So it does have auto park. So I didn't even need to do that. I didn't need to think about it. That's right. So uh, the photos here, I imagine we've looked at some of them in the slides already, but it is a very clever system and it works really well. Um, and it's, yeah, the invention of the year. So let's talk real quick about some of the other finalists, um, divergent 3d chassis components. Uh, so this is a pretty neat one. They're printing aluminum and titanium subframes, cumbersome, expensive, but if they're doing it great, that's a neat technology. It is still emergent. Maybe it will be able to scale well, uh, but yeah, it'll struggle to achieve broad impact, um, the broad impact that the award celebrates because it's slow and expensive. Ionic five, uh, imitates a combustion car experience. Chassis doesn't need to fake or anything. The neutral handling balance easily controls controlled drifts are the stuff of sports car or SUV in this case, that's been properly set up by someone uh, with talent and taste. The five N is also an incredible value at a kajillion dollars. 67, nine, uh, 595 seems kind of high, but all right. Lucid air Sapphire. Congratulations, Lucid. The suspension isn't about technology as much as it is the humans behind it using steel springs, common adaptive dampers and torque vectoring of the tri-motor powertrain. The engineers created a car with a plush ride and surgical, uh, surgically precise handling, but uh, when we put it on the track, it, the brakes and powertrain both overheated. I don't fault Lucid for that. It's, that is the, the toughest test. That is a real tough, tough test. So maybe we can cut them some slack because it's hard to do. And this is 
legitimately their first generation vehicle. You could call it first and a half, but it's not a second generation vehicle. And electric powertrains still struggle with, with proper tracks, you know, things like Nürburgring and Pikes Peak for that matter. Those are the two real crazy ones that we've seen a lot of testing on. And lastly, Porsche Active Ride. An active suspension improves on basic electronically adjustable dampers by pushing and pulling at the wheels to minimize disturbances and control body motions. In the Taycan, Taycan GTS, we sampled, that translates to remarkably flat cornering, braking, and launches, as well as a perfectly placid highway ride. I've only driven the Taycan briefly, and it wasn't, you know, the, the fast one. It was the slow one, but it was a fantastic ride. It was the kind of car that you could whip around a corner without thinking, without worrying. A lot of cars, just regular cars, not just electric, but all cars, get a little boaty in the corners. They're not meant for that. So I can believe that they're that their system would be a finalist. So guys in the comments, what did I miss? What did I misunderstand? Uh, leave it. It's probably a good idea to just leave it. Uh, and of course, uh, my friends, uh, you can subscribe to this channel. I would love it. I would appreciate it so much. I'm trying to grow the channel. It is a whole lot of work and surviving in this complicated space is difficult and exhausting. And since I refuse to tell everybody's favorite sugar-coated lies. The channel grows more slowly. Sometimes the truth is ugly, but we're here for reality, right? So uh, like, subscribe, comment, do what you do. Stay tuned and juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity-flop.